All right, so today is the 16th day of fasting. Um, as I predicted on the previous video, I had to take a pause or a break due to some rain. Um, so the whole workout Monday, uh, I hate Mondays, didn't go down, it's fine. Um, so yeah, Monday was no workout, Tuesday was no workout, and today's Wednesday. It's minutes before 12, so I'm gonna get this workout in um, before the night is over. And I uh, look forward to finishing the 21 days, which has, what, five more days left? Uh, which is pretty exciting, because one of the reasons for this documentary is to stay consistent. Very consistent in the sense of trying to get fit here, get that summer body right. So, uh, with that being said, today's reps is 30. 30 everything from, you know what we're doing. If you did the whole mile and a half walk and jog, and if you're being consistent with this type of workout here, the results is definitely gonna show. I feel like for the past two days, you know, I don't know what happened to the belly here, but it's all good, it's gonna go down. <laughs> But uh, it's all good. I'm not even gonna go any further into that. I'm gonna get started with the workout. 30 reps for everything. Let's keep this fasting going. Hopefully it's helpful for you. But definitely seeing some results here for me. So let's get started. The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. If you ever watched the movie The Secret, or you've read the book, you'll know that Rhonda Bryan refers to a certain book that changed her life. And it's this book right here, The Science of Getting Rich. Now, it's not a very long book. However, it's a very concentrated book. And it is a book that talks about a very specific process, a very specific formula for getting rich. And the essence, you know, they've, they've stripped it down, stripped it down, it's a very old book, into a very formulaic approach in which the first handful of chapters, or a bulk of the book, covers the different aspects of the process in detail. At the end of the book, you'll come across a summary. So what I've done here is I've taken the summary from the book, the end, and I've put it together into these eight parts. These are the eight parts for implementing the science of getting rich by Wallace Waddles. Now, this is for anyone that is interested, as he talks about in this book, to generate wealth in your life. And although there's different expressions of wealth, this is primarily for those that want to make monetary wealth or monetary equivalent based wealth and not dedicate a lot of time thinking of philosophies, but are really looking at you know, the metaphysical aspects, the stuff that's covered in the secret, as well as the, the, the stuff that's tangible, the action steps and so forth. Now, there's a lot to creating wealth, which comes to you on the journey. The truth is that you can spend months, years, decades of your life consuming every business book, studying the subject of creating wealth from multiple different angles. But then all you've done is you've invested you know, 30, 40, 50 years in study and probably very little time in taking action. Now, actions is what creates the value in which you put it out there in the world and people pay you for. So we want to invest a lot of time doing action. So this book simplifies it. He talks about actually why it's important to, as you're studying this material, to really be not scarce, but concentrate and focus on this book and only this book. And do that knowing that it's going to change the way you think, it's going to get you to think in a certain way, to really adopt and believe the philosophies within, which is going to get you to take certain actions, and these actions are going to create more clarity in your life, and then more information and people and specific elements as to what you need to do to create that wealth will show up without getting overly bogged down. So without further ado, these eight principles, which are on my screen right now, we're going to go deeper into and i'm going to share my insights and perspectives as well as quotes in the book so number one 
There is a thinking stuff from which all things are made, and which, in its original state, permeates, penetrates, and fills the inner space of the universe. A thought in the substance produces the thing that is imagined by the thought. So essentially, thoughts become things. Your thoughts create your reality. Everything begins with an idea. If you look around and you see all the stuff that has been created in reality, technology, software, physical things around your house or if you're in an office right now, whatever it is, all that stuff came from an idea that somebody had. And when they had this idea, they acted upon it. They might not have acted upon it in a way that they knew all the action steps, but they acted enough to get the ball rolling. And the more actions they take, the more clarity they got. And with the more clarity, they would be able to refine their actions. And they kept repeating the process over and over again until they created that very thing in reality. So ideas acted upon create reality. You can sit there and theorize and have all these ideas, but if you're not taking action, then you are not having faith in your idea, number one. And number two, you're not really working with what he calls the formless stuff. Raw materials, physical, mental, emotional, can be configured to create something new and great that is of value to others in which they're willing to pay for. So let's look at some quotes in relation to thought. Thought is the only power which can produce tangible riches from the formless substance. And by formless substance, he's referring to the physical world which the physical world is just formless substance until we give it meaning, until we focus on certain things, creating the story of our life. So having focused thought allows us to work with the formless stuff to create in reality. The stuff from what, which all things are made is a substance which thinks, and a thought of form is the substance produces the form. Now, as he mentions in his book, this isn't a lengthy discussion about the study of metaphysics. This is just enough so you can work with it to create wealth in your life, which is what we're looking for here in this discussion. Original substance moves according to its thoughts. Every form and process you see in nature is the visible expression of a thought in original substance. As the formless stuff thinks of a form, it takes that form. As it thinks of a motion, it makes that motion. That is the way all things are created. That's number one. Number two is man can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon formless substance can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. Okay, so this is the eight-step process in the summary at the end of the book, which I'm going over in detail of essentially what to do to think in a certain way and act in a certain way to produce riches in your life, to produce wealth. So in relation to point number two, some of the insights I thought about is the more we think about something, the more it thinks, the more that thing we think about turns into a desire. The greater the desire we have upon something, the more likely we are to act in accordance. And the more we act in accordance, the more we attract in accordance. Okay, we'll start to see things and the opportunities in our environment than we didn't see before. Because now we're acting on intent. We have pure intent because we're clear. And by the way, clarity comes through taking action. The more actions you take, the clearer you become. You can have a vision as to what you want, and then you can refine that vision by taking action. The more actions you take, the clearer, like a painter, you'll be able to really paint what that image is of your vision in your mind as to what you want. And the more you can do that and act upon it, desire, all these things I'm talking about happen, the more we're able to see the opportunities that already exist in our environment. And a lot of times they've already, already existed in our environment. It's just we didn't really see it because we didn't have that clear vision. The more we remove ideologies that contradict this idea that we're talking about right here, this way of thinking, the more powerful, the more power we give this particular ideology. Everything that you are right now is a result of the thinking that you have, which 
a lot of times is influenced by the external world. What we want to do is we want to be influenced to think a certain way so that we can do things a certain way. And that includes consuming this kind of information and being around certain people that facilitate it, that further embed this way of thinking. You must lay aside all other concepts of the universe than this monistic one. And you must dwell upon it until it's fixed in your mind and it has become your habitual thought. Read these creed statements over and over again. Fix every word upon your memory and meditate upon them until you firmly believe what they say. If a doubt comes to you, cast it aside as a sin. Do not listen to arguments against this idea. Do not go to churches or lectures where the contrary concept of things is taught or preached. Do not read magazines or books which teach in a different idea. If you get mixed up in your faith, all your efforts will be in vain. Do not ask why these things are true, nor speculate as to how they can be true. Simply take them on trust. The science of getting rich begins with the absolute acceptance of this faith. So while most people love to study various different sources, it's important to understand what you're doing when you study. When you pay attention to information, is your constructing the way you see reality. And that constructing may not be in alignment with your vision. And so thus, you want to consume information that constructs your thinking in a certain way. How you see reality to be a certain way that is in alignment with your vision. Then the actions are going to flow out of you. And to do this, must have the discipline to filter noise and irrelevant information from getting into our mind and set ourselves up to be around positive information that feeds our mind, that furthers these kind of understandings from certain books, certain people, certain environments, etc. To think what you want to think is to think truth regardless of its appearance. Okay? You hear me say this a lot. Nothing in life has any meaning unless you give it meaning. Okay, you can give meaning to whatever you want. You obviously want to give an empowering, ethical meaning that's out of contribution and respect, not only for others, but yourself. You obviously want to do that. But there's a lot of different kinds of disempowering meanings that we've given to things that we can remove, we can reconstruct. We want to readjust our paradigm so that when we act, it's based on this empowering paradigm that we've created through repetition of studying this kind of information and taking action in a way that supports that kind of thinking so that these behaviors just flow out of us with ease. We'll automatically do things a certain way. The truth is that most of us know what we have to do. We know what we have to do from morning till night. The reason why we don't do it is because we have conflicting ideologies, conflicting ways of thinking that is further being integrated by the supporting information that we consume. Nature is an inexhaustible storehouse of riches. The supply will never run short. Original substance is alive with creative energy and is constantly producing more forms. When the supply of building material is exhausted, more will be produced. When the soil is exhausted, so that foodstuffs and materials for clothes, clothing will no longer grow upon it, it will be renewed or more soil will be made. This is all about thinking from a place of abundance, understanding that there is far more raw material that you have access to that is even within your awareness right now, that you're even aware exists to help you create that value that you give to others in exchange for wealth. When you focus on your vision as to what you want to create, you will start to see how you can tap into those inexhaustible storehouses of riches, raw materials, and different kinds of things and people and so forth to help you achieve that vision. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be rich. The desire for riches is really the desire for a richer, fuller, and a more abundant life. And that desire is praiseworthy. So a lot of times what happens is people have a, a difficult time accepting or believing that they're worthy of wealth, worthy of being rich. And again, this comes from 
conflicting ideologies that they've been assimilating through conversations with others, different kinds of material they've been reading, and so forth. Once you start to accept that there's nothing wrong with wanting to be rich, you're not going to be apologetic in your behaviors. Your confidence is going to shine through every word that you say, every action that you take, and it's going to influence what he calls the formless stuff. And these actions are going to be based on your vision. Life has advanced so far and become so complex that even the most ordinary man or woman requires a great amount of wealth in order to live in a manner that even approaches completeness. See, the truth is, if you have a lot of wealth, if you have good money, you can have more experiences that are re readily available. All you got to do is just pay for it. You know, you can travel anywhere you want. You can eat whatever you want. You could do a, a lot of things. You can have a lot more freedom because you don't need to trade your time for money because maybe you've set up an automated business or you really understand how to invest wealth and all the different kinds of things. But having riches allows you to create it. Now, there's many different ways of doing it. You could do barter. You could do cryptocurrency. And all those are forms of an expression of value. Okay? And if you want to create money, well, it's very easy to get what you want just by paying money. So we should make it an emphasis to be able to accumulate a lot of wealth to get rich so that we can live that fulfilling, richer life. And we can do that with the people that we care about so we can you know, give back to others and so forth. Money does a lot of really powerful things. There is a science of getting rich. It is an exact science like algebra or arithmetic. There are certain laws that govern the process of acquiring riches. Once these laws are learned and obeyed by any man, he will get rich with mathematical certainty. Number three, in order to do this, man must pass from the competitive to creative mind. Otherwise, he cannot be in harmony with the formless intelligence, which is always creative and never competitive in spirit. So seeing that competition exists, is not a bad thing. In certain kinds of business environments, competition exists and sometimes can appear to be very fierce. But it's not about being in denial. It's about rising up to look above the competition, to see of the different opportunities that exist that don't require you to fight against the competition, as well as how you can work with competition. So competition really exists where there's a game with certain rules. And you can win this game by rising above and playing a higher level game which overrules the, the rules of the game at a lower level. Instead of competing, look for ways to create new realities that return riches in which you create the rules. So you can actually create different categories and opportunities and different segments in the market or even new markets in which you create the rules. And this comes from focusing on your vision and really elevating yourself to operate from this kind of level of frequency of thought that we're talking about here in this video and that's covered in this book. And that's the more esoteric stuff, the more you know metaphysical stuff. But that's how you can tune yourself to see what you can do rather than seeing what you can't do. And there's far more than what you can do than you believe is possible. A lot of times we listen to others versus listening to ourselves and then we act from our past or what others tell us to do instead of looking at our future vision and acting in the now based on what moves us forward towards that future vision while still learning from our past but learning from it overcoming it and making peace with certain aspects of your past is very important because if you don't do that you're always going to be holding on to those aspects from your past and they're going to manifest in not only your thinking but the actions or the lack of actions that you take well it is officially 12 o'clock march 17 2022 and um that right there was patience because I did not feel like doing that at all. <sighs> One of the things I notice while I'm working out, if I go consistent 
13 days consistent. 14 day I was off, 15 day I was off, 16 day I'm back on. Like, it's like all right, my body already built a habit of taking those two days off. So I'm mentally pushing myself to put on your shoes, go out there and go exercise, you know? It did rain earlier today, so I almost had an excuse like, man, is it puddles of water outside? Is the floor soaking wet? I was trying to find an excuse so bad. But um, obviously I was able to manage. The other days that I was off, the Monday, the Tuesday, uh, exercise 14 and 15 uh, a day. Like it was windy, it was a little chilly, and it was wet. So I really didn't, I could have ran in the rain and stuff, but I really didn't want to go that intense. So just had that day off. So my thing on tonight's me tonight message is on habit, you know. Or am I aware of the habit of doing what's necessary? If I took a mental break, am I aware of getting back on track? You know, that is a good question that I'll ask myself. Because clearly, it's something as simple as exercising. To me, it's simple. Put on a t-shirt, put on some shorts, socks and shoes, Go exercise. You know, um, there's time when I exercise, when I ran, when I jog, I have my um, my breaking markers. Like I take a break here and I get back running. It's just, it's amazing where I want to take the mental break to start walking, but I keep on pushing. I just keep on going further along uh, than the mark of walking so I'll go I'll run a little bit further so um habit you know that's that's the word for tonight habits habit habits you know are we talking ourselves out of the situation are we self-sabotaging ourselves in certain situations that has no one around us is not really making the choices on us but us but me so uh, just really ignoring the negative thoughts and pushing forward. So with that guys, continue on this documentary, the fasting, uh, just finished uh, day number 16 out of 21 days. Got five more days left after fasting. I'm gonna just take a, a break because I'm gonna get mentally ready for April. Um, with that being said, you know, I'm just giving thanks, sharing my gratitude of being healthy, um, staying mentally strong, strength, and wisdom. Um, so you guys take care. Have a great night.